All right, hi everyone, and how are you guys doing? Is this and as per your request, this is a tutorial how to send data from Raspberry Pi, that is a server, to a client, uh, that is a laptop or anywhere in the world um, using Python and socket programming. So let me just um, um, uh, t uh, uh, explain you my code because a lot of people um, requested me to explain your code. So yeah, let's get started guys. So first of all, I need to import socket because I am sending data through socket. So I have to import socket. Then I need an encoding. Basically encoding is used for to encode the data. Now here is the logic of my code. I'm defining a server that is right here. So I'm using with socket.socket, .socket, uh, that is socket.afinet, that is basically, I'm defining a TCP IP connection, that is socket stream as S. Then uh, what I'm doing is I'm just binding the host and the port that is right here. Okay, so uh, I say s dot bind host and port. Then I say s dot listen dot uh, that is five. That means listen to five client maximum. Con that then I'm doing is connection dot addr is equal to s dot accept. That means basically accept the connection while connect. That means while if anybody has connected, print a message saying that connected while true. Data equals to con dot receive one zero two four. So I'm receiving a data. I'm decoding the data as UTF eight because. Usually, when I wanna receive data, whenever you're sending or receiving data, you have to encode and decode, and the default format is UTF-8 or ASCII. I'm using a UTF-8, so you can use ASCII, all right? So, then I say if in the server, if my string is equal to equal to data, if anyone, if any client sends me data, then what, what you have to do is basically print, okay, wait, I'm sending the data, then my data equals to random data. Basically, here this is a function where you would write your um, sensor data, which would be comma separated values. But I'm right now generating a bunch of numbers. I am gonna show you a real time application where I am sending actual values of sensor. Okay, so um, so basically, uh, oh my phone is ringing, but that's fine. I think. Um, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll just pick it up a later on. Let me just see. All right, it's just my friend. All right, so we are at my data equals to random data. So we are getting a random data. Then uh, what I'm doing is x encode data is equal to my data dot encode. Before sending data, you need to encode the data that is a UDF8 con dot send all send all the or uh, send all. I mean, what I'm doing is basically send the data to all the IP address that have been connected to me. Else, if if it is quit, just break the loop and come outside. And this is a simple server. And let me just uh, walk you through the code for the client as well. So threading dot timer t1 my client dot start. So basically, I'm gonna uh, run the client after every 11 seconds. So as usual with socket dot socket dot socket. Then socket dot net. That means I'm defining a TCP IP connection uh, here. Excuse me. Just give me a one sec. All right, then I say my equals to input uh, enter command. So whatever command you enter, basically that command would be a in string. Then I say my input equals to my input dot encode. So basically I am encoding my command because I whenever I need to send anything across socket, you have to do encoding. Whenever you have to receive anything, you have to decode it. This is mandatory. Remember this, very important, okay? Then what I'm doing is send all. Basically I'm sending my command to the server. Uh, so what I'm doing is basically I'm inputting a, inputting, um, uh, a message basically if I say data it will encode that data into some encoding after that I send the data uh, to the server and as I showed you the code to the server server says it if the data the received data is data send the uh, sensor value so that's what it is so then this is uh, the, the data this is the data that it will, it will receive from the server as a response i'm decoding as utf8 then i'm calling my process data which will basically process my data which will split the data by comma and i will get my temperature and humidity that's all i mean uh so let me just walk you through the python code this year i have my raspberry pi my raspberry pi is in my room uh, located remotely and um, I am SSH into it. Uh, I am doing an SSH and VNC server, basically VNC viewer, not server, my bad. All right, so we have the host here. That is the host, that is would be the IP address. So make sure whenever you write the code for the server, you have to write the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. All right, so make sure you do that. So if you wanna, if your IP address is changing, you can do, um, I would say you can uh, do, um, static ip you can set, set a static ip or else you can do um if you are making your own server what i would suggest to you is 
go ahead and purchase a domain name. So instead of the IP address, you can write a domain name or else think about port forwarding. All right, let, that's enough for now. <laughs> So um, basically, I'm just writing the code for the uh, DHT sensor. Basically, if pin equals to four, sensor equals to adafruit.dht, comma, DHT22. Since I'm using a DHT22, humidity temperature, adafruit.dht read uh, sensor and the pin. So uh, I've connected to the pin number four of that is a physical pin. And basically, I am printing the value or sending the data separated by comma. Here you can see the data. So let me just run that. So this is my server code. So if I run this. So here it says server started waiting for client connection. So I come on my laptop and I, here I have my lab, uh, so client code. I just want to run that. So it says enter data. And sure it is, it sent me the temperature and humidity across the socket programming. How amazing is this? This is just a bunch of applications you can do. Just think about you have a entire server which has a different sensors when you, and you have a mobile phone application. So you say, whenever you press a button on a mobile, it will go to the server, fetch the data. For example, you are um, in, um, I am in the United States and there are sensors located in India. I have a server that is on the Raspberry Pi. I do my port forwarding, I purchase my domain name and I enter my domain name on my client side. So whenever I press a button through my mobile phone it will fetch the data that is the temperature humidity and everything all the sensor data from india and it will send me through socket programming this is just amazing a bunch of applications you can do think about images you can transmit images think about an intrusion detection system where whenever anyone comes to your room so there you have an ultrasonic sensor it will detect the intrusion and it will encode the, it will take a photo of the intrusion uh, basically through pi camera it will encode the uh, it will read the data first of all image as a binary it will encode the data as utf8 and send the data across a socket on the client side you received an image when anyone walk comes to your room just think about it these are some of the endless application that you can think of so that's it for this video if you have any questions or any concerns please let me know by doing that by typing your concerns in the comment section below and i would try my best to get back to you as soon as possible but this semester i'm a little bit busy but i'm trying my best to get uh, best videos and best content delivered to you in python raspberry pi so a lot of people um, ask me to make videos on raspberry pi so that's why i'm making videos on raspberry pi python so that's it for this video and i will see you guys next time